Hey guys, it's Rev, and today I'm going to be going over what I think is the best way to create a character by ranking the boons, flaws, and stat points to invest into, and what each of them do, so you can think on your own and craft your own creative build. Also, I should note that I will be talking about all of these from a solo player point of view, as that's just my playstyle, despite it being, like, way harder. Speaking of my playstyle, make sure you guys check out my Twitch. I'm streaming Deep Boken daily to answer all of your questions and teach you how to play better. You can also join my Discord to become a wonderful part of my community and hang out with us for community events and more. Anyways, let's get into the video. Alright, so as far as character creation goes, and I'm going to be look, talking about this all in a solo perspective, like I said earlier. Um, as far as character creation goes, the first thing you have to look at is the race, obviously. And races in this game, unlike Rogue, are actually pretty not, or not as influential, I should say. Like, you don't need to roll hundreds of dollars to get a Dezin to suck off the meta or, like, get a, you know, like a Navarin or something. Like, in that game, if you get a Riggin or a Castellan, you're just objectively worse off than somebody who rolls a uh, Dezin, which is not true in this game, which is amazing. I love that about this game. Now, the rarer races don't have better abilities, per se, but instead they just look a drippier to, uh, to, like, the majority of people. And they're kind of just rarer because that's what people anticipate, or that's, like, what we anticipated that... Uh, more players would want to roll for, so they would, it's just literally, literally just a mo like a money tactic. There's no real reason they're rarer, besides pe like potential lore reasons, but the, yeah, I mean, the fact that Ganymede is like the, one of the rarest races is like one of the main reasons why Rigus is living in a, in a six-story mansion. So anyways, pick whatever race you think looks the coolest. Uh, if you want to play Vesperian, pick Vesperian. We'll play Ganymede, pick Ganymede. Like, one of my, my favorites so far of Vesperian, obviously Ganymede. Like, the Ganymede's really cool. I like Seltor a lot as well. Um, those are probably my top three. Adret looks alright, you know. I, I think uh, Grimorian is okay as well. Like, honestly, I, I, I when I play, I like Etrian as well. Like, I, when I play, I like to play as a variety of races on all like so I have like a multi many files and I like to play on a variety of them. I don't like to just sit down on one on one file and only play that file. I, I usually do a build on a different race every time I play. So races really don't matter when you're making a character. Now obviously you can choose your name, whatever you want your name to be. Um you know you do you. Um after that you can choose your face, you're like you know all your like how you look and everything, which obviously doesn't matter. It's just how you want to look. Um, a lot of the races can just wear like a mask or something and change how they look. And uh, there's that. But Vesperians are just by default nerfed, so they can't do that. So if you're Vesperian, just take the L. You can't change your face. You're stuck with a freshy, freshy accessory for the rest of your life. And then after that is where we're really going to get into like some more interesting stuff. So your starting weapon. Um, I wouldn't say there's a objectively best starting weapon. I think sword, like the medium, is like a really good Im like all arounder, and I think heavy and uh, light are both kind of their own interesting playstyle. A lot of people would call it cheese, but they are a playstyle, in my opinion. They're a playstyle, and if you learn that playstyle, you will perform very very well, um, even against sword users. So, and uh, anybody will tell you that, and anybody who doesn't know how to fight them will call them cheese or busted. But honestly, it's up to your playstyle. So I would do a lot of experimenting with the three different weapon types and all of the elements and see what you like. But when we go into attunement, um, it gets a little bit more interesting because um, there's I wouldn't say there's any best attunement. And I'm not going to tell you what race to go. I'm not going to tell you what weapon to start. And I'm not going to tell you what attunement to go because you can, you can actually go any of these. It's up to you. You can do whatever you want. But... Um, for solo play, I've experienced personally that Flame Charm is probably the best because it's it, it's a bit more uh, help towards solo players in a variety of ways, such as um, the Flame Wisp is really, really strong. Flame Leap gets you up places that you can't get without other people. Um, it has like a lot of tools, has great comboing attacks to fight like mobs or other players that are attacking you. It has like lots of like sustainability with like a variety of things. Like, it's it's probably the best one like level one through sixty solo element. Frost draw is a really good element in my opinion, but you do have to be like a little bit more. You have to pay quite a bit more attention, I'd say, to your build, and uh, you have to get like some pretty rare like rare talents, I guess, with Frost draw. Thunder call is 
Um, Thunder Call is really strong, and usually people play it in a non-aggressive way, like they're running away from you, just spamming their moves, and it's really cringe and annoying, especially when you start hearing them spamming their move, when you hear the ether sound, when it's not enough of ether, like little, like, tinkling or whatever, I don't know, like, like the little dings it, it makes when you hear somebody else doing it, and it's super cringe, but Thunder is really good, um, objectively, uh, without any, like, opinion in there of mine. I honestly hate people who use Thunder Call and run. If you're going to use Thunder Call, at least fight me. Um, Gale Breathe is really strong as well. I think, again, I think all of these elements are really strong, and all of them can be played solo. Like, just because you're Thunder Call or Frost Draw or, or Gale does not mean you're not going to be able to perform solo. In fact, my current character had no attunement for a very long time. My current character that I play on, my heavy character, who's level 60, um, has had, had no attunement for like the first 30 levels, and then or 35 levels, I think, and then I got Shadow. So, and I wouldn't recommend that completely. I mean, like, if you're going to go no attunement, I think you should get your element pretty early on. Because then you won't get mantras, like the three mon the three star mantras, which is something I regret a lot. Because I have, like, a ton of rare talents for things that aren't my mantra, or my element, I should say. My attunement is what I actually should say. And that's really holding my build back. But my build's really, really strong anyways, because of, like, things I've gotten. And I'll make a separate video talking about my build personally, but... The benefit of starting no attunement is that you have a 100% chance of gaining the mantras from the uh, physical tree. So if you, so let's say you have five strength, then you have 100% chance of probably of getting a strength mantra. You know, like the flurry of fists or whatever it's called. I forgot what it's called, uh, or like an agility mantra, like revenge, which is five agility. So if you start five strength, five agility with no attunement, you're, the mantra you get, the power three or whatever, you're gonna get those 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 mantras like dash and and revenge, which I think are very very strong as well. So that's why you would want to start no attunement, and also you get a free ten a, ten uh, investment points that you can put into whatever you want when you uh, when you go no attunement. That's really really nice. So. Those are my, that's my opinion. Um, you can do anything, though. It's up to you in the end. It's your build. It's your life. Now, as far as core attributes go, I always like to just, like, put one strength in right off the bat because it saves you from having to buy a dumbbell early on. It saves you from all this stuff, and you get to buy an, uh, a pickaxe, which is really good. Um, fortitude, uh, it, it kind of if, it's kind of iffy. Usually, I don't put much into fortitude. Um, lately, I've been going the no attunement build, which means I'm usually going a uh, one strength, zero fortitude, five agility. A certain, it depends on what build I'm going for, but sometimes I put it in points into intelligence or willpower. And then usually I don't go any charisma. Um, I usually never go charisma in any of my builds unless there's a certain talent I'm looking for or a certain build I'm going for. But this is something you should think about and think about what type of talents you want or what kind of play style you're going for before you put your attributes in. I think if I had to put a tier list of how strong these were, I'd say the strongest ones um, is it's like a weird, they're like varying, like a kind of varying strengths between fortitude, agility, intelligence, and willpower. Those four are like really good. Charisma, I think, is only good if you are full investing into it. If you're full investing into charisma, it's really good. Strength is almost never like the best, like is never like amazing to get. Sometimes, like a lot of the time, you'll end up picking up strength for certain talents because some really good talents, as you'll find out in the future, have a strength requirement. So, like certain talents that are really good have like a 25 or a 20 strength requirement, along with another uh, attribute. So, eventually, you'll probably put points into strength, but usually, I like to start with uh, some one strength, um, agility, intelligence, and willpower. And sometimes I like to start 10 Fortitude if I want to be able to get a helmet early on. And that's that. Now, the really important part, and you, you can choose whatever attributes you want, but that's that's basically all you really need for that. But moving on, and oh, also I should go over, um, your race gives you some core attributes to start with. This is pretty much not very, uh, not, not, not a huge deal. Um, it's just a couple of attribute points. Sometimes it gets you to 10 early on, which gets you like a chance of getting certain um, talents very, very early on, which is not a big deal at all. So don't even worry about that at all. Uh, kind of just ignore it and whatever, move on. Uh, it's really not that, not that impactful. Um, now the really important part when, now that we're moving on is boons and flaws. Now your boons and flaws are really, really important. And I've seen, this is the biggest mistake I've ever seen. I might make a whole video on its own talking about why, like asking people why they're doing this. And the people are picking the autodidact boon, and they're assuming that it's just the best. And I don't know who's telling people this. I honestly have no idea what video they watched or what content creators are telling people to go autodidact, because it is objectively the worst boon. 
no no doubt in my mind, that is the worst boon you can go. Because it doesn't give you 60 extra attribute points. No, it doesn't give you anything besides you don't have to click a dumbbell one time or whatever training tool one time. It doesn't do anything for you. The only time Autodidact will ever, and I mean ever, be good is is if you're doing like a, a speed run. Not, not like not like, oh I want to level fast. Like I mean like a literal speed run. Because Autodidact gives you one free attribute point to invest in Um when you level up. Which just isn't good. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. Like that's just not good. Like it's and it's not like it gives you an extra attribute point. It just lets you invest one into a stat without having to like use the training tool. It's so pointless. It's so like it's objectively the worst boon okay so with that out of the way i think the best boon that you almost always should take is survivalist survivalist is super strong um just because you makes you completely immune to the acid rain that happens everywhere which is really really annoying that get to get hit by and it it's it's just really good i mean like i think it makes you immune to like maybe a couple of other things i'm not sure i haven't really like thoroughly tested it myself because i always take it but um, it, it's like really good. It's it's a very it's almost a talent. Like it's so strong, and gourmet I think is pretty strong, especially when you pair it with like something like squeamish, so that it kind of cancels out. But I think gourmet like outweighs squeamish. Um, squeamish I think is really annoying. By the way, we'll, we'll go into that. So I think gourmet is really good. If I did, I'm gonna put these into like letter tiers. So I think autodidact is probably F tier. Autodidact is just simply F tier. D tier maybe if you consider like potential speedrun capabilities with the with the boon. Um, Gourmet is going to be like an A or a B tier, somewhere there, um, for me. Marauder is definitely A tier, if not like low S tier, because the Marauder is, is, is pretty good, because it means you get slightly more luck for gripping people, and I've, I haven't made a video talking about luck, I'm sure other people have said things about it, or you've heard about it at least. Um, luck is really, really strong for rolling good talents, or good talents that you need, so that's why Marauder is pretty good. And my, my current character right now, my power 60 I was talking about earlier, is running Marauder Survivalist, which I think is a very, very good combo, and I have been enjoying it a lot. Uh, so, Marauder is probably S tier, honestly, S minus, I'd say. Maverick is probably a B tier talent. Honestly, when Maverick came out, and the reason Maverick exists, by the way, is because of my suggestion. I said, I told them, I told the, dev the devs, because they were asking for boon ideas and talent ideas and whatever. I said, there should be a boon that you know, increases your experience gain if you're playing by yourself. And they thought that was a good idea, so they added in Maverick. And honestly, I have ran Maverick before, and I don't feel it at all. It doesn't, I have feel zero impact from this boon. It doesn't feel impactful at all. It's not really worth taking, even if you play completely solo. Because I have leveled up 1 to, like, like 1 to 60, basically completely solo. And I did not feel, like, with Maverick. And I did not feel its impact at all compared to a run where I didn't have it. And, and in fact, the run where I didn't have it, I felt like I was leveling faster, doing the same things. So Maverick is honestly a B, maybe even a C tier boon, even though I love it to death. It's, it's you know, literally my boon. Like, it's the solo player boon. I love it to death. It's amazing. But, you know, it's just not good right now. And obviously I said Survivalist is very, very strong. So... Um, the best combinations for me right now are Survivalist Marauder or Survivalist Gourmet. You could go Gourmet Marauder and ignore Survivalist and, like, take that damage, but it's honestly not the best. And obviously you are going to go two boons, most likely. Um, sometimes you might go, like, not, if you want, you can go no, not two boons. You, like, in case you don't want to be, like, a, like a squeamish or a vegetarian, you can go, like, Survivalist Obvious. And we're going to go into these flaws for a second, and then we'll talk about combinations. I'm probably being a bit confusing right now. But... As far as boons go, Autodidact, F tier, Gourmet, A or B tier, Marauder, I'll say A minus, I guess, Marauder, S minus, Maverick, like, B or C tier, Survivalist, S tier. Um, and then we're going to go into flaws, and the flaws in, in this game are pretty interesting. Deficient is not one I would ever recommend. I took it on my current character, my level 60, and... It's, it's really annoying, honestly. Like, the number of times I've chased somebody down and they actually just out-ether me is insane. At my current level, it's not a big problem at all, really, because I have um, end gear, I have end gear uh, armor that gives me insane ether regen. And and uh, it's, so it's not really as big of a deal for me now. But I wouldn't suggest deficient. I mean, it's not, it wasn't that bad, but 
yeah, so I'm going to be ranking these. An S tier in the flaws is going to be obviously like a really good flaw to take. Like you don't really have, you can't, you don't really even notice it. And F tier is like, this will hurt your build very badly. And I'd say deficient is like a C or D tier. Okay. So C is deficient C or D tier flaw. Hemophilia, I'd say is a B tier flaw. Um, you can die to blood loss pretty easily, especially from the dagger critical attack because that drains your blood like crazy. So hemophilia can be pretty bad, but usually you won't notice it. So if you want to risk the occasional time of just like getting getting killed by blood when you're fighting bandits and you're not paying attention, then hemophilia is for you. It's B or A tier. It's up to you if you want it. Obvious is an S tier. Obvious is an S tier flaw. I mean, it's really, really good for obvious, re <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um... It just means it's, it's harder to sneak up on enemies. And honestly, sneak in this game isn't really that relevant. There's not... Literally, there's like no situations where you're sneaking past people or you're doing like missions where you need to be sneaky. If there are missions where being sneaky has like insane benefits, then obvious might be moved down. But right now, it's like the must-have. Simple. I've never tested simple personally, so I don't know how impactful this flaw is when you do take it. I don't know if, like, you take simple, then suddenly you can no longer play the game because you level at the speed of fucking nothing. But it is two points. And now I'm just going to assume that it, it decreases your speed, your leveling speed by a quarter. Okay, we'll say you you, you level at 75% of the speed you normally do with, with simple. That seems like it might be even more than what it is, probably. And with that in mind, and also the fact that it gives you two points, I'm going to put it in B tier. I honestly don't think it's that terrible. I think if you just put in extra time to level your character, that's free two points, and then now you're not obvious, now you're nothing else, and it's actually really, really nice to be simple. So there's that, and honestly, you could even like try to cancel it out a little bit by going simple plus Marauder, or I mean Maverick, sorry. If you go simple plus Maverick, then, you know, like, kind of cancels out a little bit. Now Squeamish um, is, honestly to me, it's like really annoying. So I don't really like going squeamish because it, your hunger is always going down, and it's like by a noticeable amount too. Like it's not like by a little bit. <laughs> squeamish makes sure it makes it go down by quite a bit. So unless you're a gourmet, or you're the type of person to always be gathering food, I don't like taking squeamish because it always like makes me have to go and gather food all the time. So honestly, I'd put squeamish in like C tier. It's not that good. It's like only good in very specific uh, boon flaw builds, or like certain like builds where you know you're always going to be getting it. Like builds where you there's a talent where you kill people and get food back, so it kind of cancels out Squeamish anyways. But, yeah, Squeamish is honestly not for me. It's like a C tier, for sure. Vegetarian is really, really good. The only thing is there are lots of foods in the game that are giving you, like, good buffs and, like, bonuses when you eat them, which makes Vegetarian, like, kind of iffy, like you don't really want it. Uh, I've been leaning away from vegetarian now. My my main flaws used to always be obvious vegetarian, but honestly, some of these foods are really, really nice to have. Like, you can just have 10 of them, and two of them fill you up to your maximum from zero, so it's, like, really, really nice. So, unless you want to go vegetarian plus, like, gourmet, so you're getting more. I don't know. There's some interesting combinations here, but vegetarian, honestly, is still going to be, like, an A tier or a B tier for me. So yeah, that's what that's what it is for me. Deficient is like I don't remember what I said, like C or D tier. Hemophilia is like A or B tier. Obvious is like S tier. Uh, simple is like B tier. Squeamish is like C or D tier, or B through D. I don't know B three B or C tier. Vegetarian is like A or B tier. So you can do a couple of different combinations of these. You want to go survivalist marauder, survivalist gourmet. Then like that's really good. You can go gourmet marauder if you want to. But usually I won't do that. Um, those are like my usual boons that I usually run. And I think those are the strongest in the game right now. And then you can do any combination of flaws. I think just the worst flaw you can take, honestly, is hemophilia. Or not hemophilia, but deficient hemophilia and squeamish really like can impact you. But other than that, those are those are the, the boons and flaws that I usually run. And now we can go into the uh, starting island. Alright, now finally, the last thing you need to think about is the starting island. Now, up until basically yesterday, I thought that Etris was like the worst, or the, not the worst, sorry, excuse me. Until yesterday, I thought Etris was the best and that Vigil was just the worst. But I have done a bit of playing on both now, and I've discovered that Vigil is probably just objectively better. 
Um, I think Vigil is very, very, very good. You get a free Lumber Axe. You get, you get like, 50 notes. You know, you get everything. Um, you also get 50 notes, potentially, for going to Etris or a free Gold Ring. 25 plus Gold Ring or 50 notes. But you don't get a free Lumber Axe at all unless there's something I'm missing out on and don't know about. You also, on Vigil Isle, though, is that you also get a bunch of XP from turning in this red box. And also, there's, like, a trainer right there that you can, like, get a couple of levels without leaving the starter island on, which is honestly really good so my current recommendation for you guys right now is to start on vigil isle um i i'm also eclipse right now of uh why vigil's better but yeah you it, i think it's just better right now i think currently the better isle is vigil and once you learn it so start on vigil uh give it a couple of tries and then you'll see why i like it so much probably and yeah so that's basically it this is how i like to start my character or how i like to create my character in Deepwoken. If you guys have any questions or you disagree with anything I said, leave a comment, join my Discord, ping me, do whatever you want. Make sure you join my Discord, come to my Twitch streams, do all that jazz. This is, in my opinion, the best way to make a character in Deepwoken, and the only way to make a character in Deepwoken. And if you guys want to be optimal and like play the best possible way you can, this is what I suggest you do. I know most people are looking for boons and flaws. I might make its own video, but... Yeah, this is basically it. So if you guys like the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.